Hey, what's up, New York Comic Con? It's us, Yen Press, and you're at the Yen Press Manga and Light Novel Party. And we have some of our great editorial staff at Yen Press, some people who work on the manga and light novels, because you can't have a manga and light novel party without some manga and light novel editors. So why don't we go ahead and meet our panelists? So first off, Carl, introduce yourself. Let us know what you do for Yen Press, some of the titles you edit, and what did you bring to the Yen Press manga and light novel party? My name again, my name is Carl. I'm a manga editor. I've worked on titles like Laidback Camp, Prison School, let's say a Skull Face Bookseller Honda-san, and I brought a uh, lemonade, which I'm not going to show very carefully because it might spill on my computer, and also chocolate chip cookies and beef jerky. Oh, the perfect combination. <laughs> Oh, good. I was about to say, you know, with that glass of lemonade, I don't think you could share that with everybody. I don't think you could share that with the panelists here, nor the audience that we're speaking to. But I think we can spread those cookies and beef jerky around. So thanks uh -huh. for thanks for bringing that to the party, Carl. Thanks for the introduction. Next up, Riley, please introduce yourself. Hi, right, sure. I'm Riley Pearsall, an editorial assistant in Yen Press. Uh, this is actually the one year anniversary of when I started. And some of the series I've worked on are, yeah, <laughs> and some of the series I've worked on are Goblin Slayer, Told It Down Hanako Kun, and Rascal Does Not Dream of Funny with the Senpai. What? And my <laughs> so three of our <laughs> biggest titles. Oh, amazing. And what I brought to the party is some delicious waffles covered with lovely maple syrup. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm, yeah, gotta love that combo. You can't have waffles without maple syrup. So thanks for bringing that to the party, Riley, in addition I have maple to yourself. syrup, just the best parts. Yeah. <laughs> of course. All right, next up on our list of panelists, Peyton, please introduce yourself. So I'm Peyton Campbell. I'm an assistant editor on the light novel team for Yen On. And some of the titles that I'm more proud of having worked on range from titles like 86 and Konosuba to Combatants Will Be Dispatched and Interspecies Reviewers. Oh, okay. and for the snack train, um, I guess I have some not pocky here. It's called Lucky Stick, if you can see. The green screen is kind of messing with <laughs> me a bit. And I also have a little, you know, Niku. So, <laughs> A little bit of an aftermath. It's funny that Riley actually brought some maple syrup to put on his waffles because I had the same thing. Like, does anybody else like that combo of maple syrup and Nico, or is that just me? Oh, no, you put it put it on breakfast sausage. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Amazing. Have you ever had maple on bacon? Yes. 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 The best. Like, people that don't get the salty savory combo just don't know what they're missing. No. I don't want to be friends with those people. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't have taste. Literally don't have taste. I think. Yeah, in a very literal sense. And last but not least, uh, Anna, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm I'm Anna. Obviously, um, I've worked on titles uh, on the light novels on the light novel side. I've been killing slimes for three hundred years, uh, Bakano and uh, Bottom Tier Tom Tomozaki. Those are some of my favorites to work on. And as for the party, I had a some difficulties, and I ran out without uh, remembering to bring anything. So I'm basically a terrible freeloader. Oh, no problem at all. Uh, I mean, it seems like we have enough snacks and enough maple syrup, because strangely enough, that's what I too brought to the party. I also brought maple syrup. And nothing but? Just, just, just the maple syrup. Hmm, strange that we all decided to bring maple syrup. But anyway, I realized I didn't introduce myself. So I'm Mark, the Yenpress marketing guy. And I'm the one who's uh, who's hosting this amazing Yenpress manga and light novel party. And I'm sure you all came to the party, of course, to hear our amazing announcements. So without further ado, why don't we get started on, on announcing some great manga and light novel titles? You all ready to do this? Yeah, sounds good. All right, let's go. Starting with our first announcement, which is, all right, here we go. One that's very near and dear to our hearts at Yen Press. Do ra 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 S H. I'm saying that correct, right? It's S H, yep. not sh. Yeah, do ra ra S H. It's short for snake hands. If you're mm. curious, do ra ra S H is the sequel series to the original uh, do ra ra ra. 
which is an urban fantasy set in Ikebukuro, Tokyo. There's always something kind of going on beneath the surface in the city here. Um, you've got gang wars and information brokers and headless Celtic fae and cursed swords and you know a whole bunch of really interesting and unique characters. It's one of the big things I love about Jarara. Um, so Jarara SH is the sequel series that kind of has more of the same, but uh, you know, a little bit different. Um, it starts in a similar way as the original series with a boy um, named Yahiro. He moves to Tokyo and starts school at Raira Academy, and he makes friends and you know starts to have some adventures. But unlike the main character of the main series, uh, Mikado, he came to Ikebukuro to get away from a boring, ordinary life, and he was looking for adventure. On the other hand, Yahiro was uh, kind of ostracized. He wasn't very popular. He had kind of a hard life back home, so he's looking for a fresh start. He's very anxious and very paranoid. He feels fear a lot worse than most other people, but this is a light novel, so if you if you don't want to get hurt, the chances of staying out of trouble are kind of difficult to avoid. And there are all kinds of adventures awaiting in the big city. Um, for example, the headless rider who you know rides around on a motorbike and is rumored to be headless is one of the most famous ur urban legends in Ikebukuro, um, but she hasn't been seen in a while, so no one is quite sure what's going on there. But if you like the original Dorara, absolutely check this one out. If you haven't read the original, um, it's by one of my favorite authors. He's really great at coming up with interesting characters and all of these really uh, intricate, interconnected plot lines. Um, so definitely give it a read. All right, so let's move on. Next announcement is Hanachan and the Shape of the World. This is, I think, a very interesting and maybe a very different title from a lot of the press stuff because it is very moody, very atmospheric. Um, it, it's basically a story about this young girl, Hana, and it's basically just her, you know, learning about life and growing older. It's, I guess the closest thing would maybe be kind of like a little bit the Gyotsuba, mm. but it leans more into more like a, let's say like a creatively artistic and very gorgeously rendered world. Um, I think this title, especially for someone who's really into manga that doesn't look like other manga, this one is a really good title. Um, I think that uh, uh, in terms of other authors it's similar to, I think the closest one might be someone like Pampanya, who is also known for drawing these very interesting, gorgeous, detailed environments and backgrounds, but with a very simple character design. So I think that this series is very much something that if you want like a manga that is not like the rest, this title is really there. Anything like Yatsuba is definitely a welcome addition. Anything that gives us something that we haven't seen before, even more welcome. So. So yeah, no, happy to see this one over here. And let's see what else we have in store. This one, please put them on Takamine-san. What's please put them on Takamine-san about? Yes, the cover might be a little bit of a hint if you look closely down at the lower left corner there. Well, there's, there's nothing to see there. A shoe, I think? I don't know, something like that. But anyway, Riley, please tell us about hey. the series. So, Takane Takamine-san is the best at absolutely everything she tries her hand at. Respected by the entire school and is incredibly attractive to boots. Koshi Shidota, meanwhile, is the complete opposite. He's a friendless outcast who can't really seem to do anything right. So he's very confused when one day he happens to see Takamine's bare chest in the gym storeroom in between classes, and even more confused when he happens to see her take off her panties in the middle of math class, and no one seems to notice. It turns out that Takamine is so perfect because she is a perfectionist, with a reality bending power, Eternal Virgin Lord, which allows her to reset the timeline and change events whenever she takes off her underwear. The only hitch is that when she uses this power, her underwear disappears, and anyone who sees her bare breasts will remember the previous timelines. And now that Chidota knows her secret, she blackmails him into becoming her co-conspirator and a closet to hold on to all the extra underwear she needs. Uh, just two real quick things. Like, I'm always thinking about the stories that I tell my friends and other acquaintances look about the things that I experience in this industry. And I gotta say, like, hands down, one of the things I appreciate most is that you never see the same thing twice. That's entirely untrue. You always see the same thing twice, but you always get surprised as well. And whenever we get these acquisitions, I always think to myself, which style is going to take the cake? Which one's really going to, like, force the envelope and just be as out there as possible. And then you hear a story about a girl that can stop time by taking off her 
clothing or undies in this case. But the other thing was, if you zoom in on the title a little bit, like maybe you at home can just zoom in on your screens because I don't know if we can do that here, but I'm looking at the Japanese characters in the title itself. And the ten ten over the ta on the right is actually a bra. I didn't notice that until about 15 seconds ago. And it's hilarious. Like the level of creativity is out of this world. That is absolutely hilarious. And our, our design team will definitely have their, their work cut out for them to, to give something quite as quite as uh, as unique <laughs> as oh, I have no as doubt. That. Like Wendy, wherever you are, I hope yeah. you're taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, if you're listening, you got your work cut out for you. But hey, I digress. Let's move on with the panel. Let's see what's next in store from us at Yen Press. We've got In Another World with My Smartphone. Yeah, I'm sure people are familiar with this series. You know, everyone makes mistakes, even God. Like when he accidentally dropped a bolt of lightning right where Mochizuki Toya happened to be standing. By way of apologizing for his premature death, God offers to resurrect Toy in another world, giving his physical and magical abilities a powerful boost. God also allows Toya to take any object of his choosing with him, and he picks the most essential tool of any modern teenager, his smartphone. With an incredible array of magic and the uh, technological know-how of his old world at his fingertips, Toy is a force to be reckoned with, and he's soon making friends with and meeting royalty, magical beasts, and a whole lot of beautiful women. If you like the anime or any of our other isekai series with overpowered protagonists like Overlord, High School Prodigies, and Death March, this one will be right up your alley. Well, as one who has not watched the anime, I look forward to, to reading this and finding out just how smartphones are used in another world. But let's take a look at what's next at our Yen Press manga and light novel party. We've got, ooh, pretty, pretty big one right here, Yokohama Station SF. So please tell us about this. Yes, um, so speaking of things that are a little different, Yokohama Station SF is a sci-fi story that takes place in this kind of technologically advanced future where uh, Yokohama Station has taken over Japan, essentially. Um, if you've ever taken the trains in Japan or if you are interested in ever taking a train in Japan, um, this is kind of an interesting take on that. There's basically two modes of life. There's inside the station and outside the station. Inside life is very safe, but it's also very strict and automated. If you're familiar with uh, some of the JR systems in Japan, you might've heard of the Suica card. It's a little refillable ticket card. Um, that you can just tap at the turnstile instead of having to buy a ticket every time. But now the Suica system is like an implant in everybody's heads um, and it takes care of things like money and social credit and it's kind of like ruling over this entire separate world inside the station. People get kicked out for various infractions um, and our main character is one of those people who has been kicked out into the dangerous world outside. But he gets a special ticket to go back inside and try to find the leader of a kind of resistance group to try to set people free from the oppression of Yokohama Station. He doesn't really know how, but he's got five days and he's got to find this person. Um, so it's about his descent into the world and, and navigating this kind of weird, weird world inside. It's definitely a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, there's bureaucracy jokes and things like, do you want to you do you want to pay for this service or would you like to watch an ad for like a lot of random things. And so if you are into kind of a little bit satirical sci-fi, what if scenarios, uh, this is for you. Uh, I do want to mention that if you've read uh, Skullface book, Sola Honda-san, this book actually gets mentioned in that series as well as like the hot new science fiction novel that's selling like hot cakes that everybody's talking about. So if you're curious about what that title was from reading Honda-san, this is your chance to actually check it out for real. Mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. Next up, let's see what we've got. Can't stop cursing you. Oh man, that's look at that's, that that's one hell of a cover there. <laughs> look at look at all those yep. colors. So please tell us what's this one about? What's Can't Stop Cursing You about? Oh yeah, and it is one hell of a series too. So this is a world where people can make contracts with devils to gain the power to curse somebody to death, giving countless sickos and serial killers the means to commit the perfect crime. Standing against them is the cold-hearted curse detective, Kiyoharu Sayama, who has uh, a couple of supernatural tricks up his own sleeve. The ability to predict where the next string of incidents is going to occur, and his devil's tail. 
which allows him to ask a single yes or no question to a trace of the curse left on each of the victims that must be answered truthfully. And the killers can't afford to just let uh, wait him out either, because if they don't kill enough people within the amount of time specified in their contracts, the same fate will befall them. Mm. It leads to incredible paranormal games of cat and mouse, with mm. Sayama doing his heart, trying his hardest to uncover how each killer's curse works and discover their identities with the least number of questions possible, while the killers do everything in their power to disguise their motives and distract them away from who they really are. It's very reminiscent of Death Notes and the more psychological stand battles of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, thanks to all the rules and limitations of how the killer and the detective powers work and how they're constantly trying to maneuver around each other. So definitely keep an eye on this series if you've been looking to scratch that itch. I can yeah. already see the fan art of this guy. Absolutely. And he's already working on some COVID hair, so very <laughs> appropriate for the COVID. <laughs> very, very 2020, very of, of the decade, right? <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you very much. Let's let's move on. What's up next from our line, from our list? We've got sex education 120%. So uh, please tell us, what's what's this one about? Uh, so this is the title. This is a comedy title. It's literally about sex, sex education because the setting is there is a gym teacher at an all-girls school named uh, Tsuji Sensei, and she, she's taken upon herself to tackle uh, the problem of extremely poor sex, sex edu- education among students that... Uh, that the somehow they have both like the the lowest rate the lowest age uh, for people who have lost their virginity and also the most amount of of students who don't know anything about sex and so she's t- she is like I need to change things and so she tries to teach her class about things like how, what's a condom mm-hmm. uh, like what should you do, you know do in certain situations and but her students are just like so off the wall and so uh, lacking in any sort of understanding of sex and the birds and the bees that it creates for a lot it makes for a lot of comedy in a nutshell this is about a teacher who felt sex education was less than 100% so she's taking it upon herself to make it 120% is that correct pretty much yes um, and you sort of see that each of the students has their own thing. Like you have the girl who's holding a, clearly what is a BL novel or of some kind, her, her, her knowledge of sex comes from reading BL manga. You have a girl who's really into cats, uh, just care about anything else. There's actually a panel of her cat. She's like holding a condom in one panel and her cat rips it apart. And, and you clearly see one of the girls and what she's into. You look careful. Well, let's move on. What's, what's up next for us? Hazure's skill from Legendary Assassin to Anonymous Guild member. So please tell us about this one. Okay, so this is one of mine. As Mark already said, our working title for this series is Hazure's skill from Legendary Assassin to Anonymous Guild member. Um, the Japanese skill for this series is pretty fun. It's actually Hazure skill kage ga usui o motsu gildo shokuin ga jitsu wa densetsu no ansatsu So what that means is that the Hazure skill is Kagega Usui, which I've actually been like lovingly referring to as blend into the background because our dear protagonist Roland is an assassin that like breaks away from his adventuring party and takes out the demon lord of this world by himself. In a way. I mean, I'm not going to give away like the big twist that I'm sure you all know is coming by now, but let's just say that it doesn't pan out exactly how everyone thinks it does. Anywho, as a reward for taking out the demon lord, the ruler of the local kingdom grants him whatever his heart desires. And while trying to figure out what he wants, he actually remembers the words of one of his former party members. And she said that if she could do anything she wanted, she would want to live a normal life. So that's exactly what he asks for as his reward from the king. And so he gets granted the useless skill, kage ga usui, or blend into the background, or become a nobody, or whatever we end up calling it in the future. And once that happens, he decides to live a slow life as a nobody. But as I'm sure we all know, like that's probably not gonna be how it is for long. And it's pretty fun because I've always been the type of reader that really enjoys the story of the accomplished adventurer that has it all and tries to live a normal life right afterwards because that's never really how it pans out. Shouts out to Mariella from Mm. The Alchemist Who Survived and now Dreams of a Quiet Life in the City and the goodest boy of all time, Rota from Wolf Wolf Story, who just wants to relax but never seems to get to. Next up, Love of Kill. So please tell us what Love of Kill is about. 
So in a way, uh, Hazardous Skill is the perfect transition into this title because it is also an about assassin. Uh, it's basically, it is uh, the woman uh, who, who's, who's back of the head, whose head you see from behind uh, is codenamed Chateau and she is basically works for an assassin's organization, you know, and kills people for hire and whatnot. Uh, the guy is named uh, Dian Ha, and he is a, a debt collector for, again, uh, extra legal situations, and basically the two encounter each other, and you basically fight, and they start a very strange relationship slash cat and mouse game. This title, um, I think, is it's interesting because kind of sometimes in manga we divide things between like shonen and shoujo, and we have these broad categories, but of course we know that lots of guys read shoujo and lots of girls read shonen, right? And this comes from a magazine that is specifically designed to be more shonen-esque stories for female readers. So if you're someone who kind of likes the mix, I think this title has a lot of potential. Also, it's about cool assassins and whatnot. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Carl. So yeah, no, a lot to a lot to look look forward to. Uh, and and before I move on to the final announcement at our at our manga and light novel party. I just want to look back on on this year because you know, granted, it's my first year at Yen Press, but I'd say we've had a, a stretch of good announcements, right, everybody? Yeah, I'd say so. I I have to say I'm I'm looking forward to a lot. I'm I'm looking forward to to us publishing solo leveling. I you know the the announcements we made at Crunchyroll Expo, stuff like play it cool guys. Looking forward to that. Uh, Neil and Deviella date alive like i could i could go on it's it's been it's been a lot of fun making these announcements and seeing how excited you all have been i i would say that it's been such a good year of announcements from us at yen press that we an already established and strong company publishing manga and light novels has leveled up in fact i'd say that we've leveled up in spades and we have all these points and i don't know what to do with these points team Panelists, what do we do with these points? Where do I allocate these? Do you have suggestions for what I should do with them? I mean, if it were me, I feel like I just want to do something off the beaten path and just pump all those points into like a single stat. I think so. I mean, yeah, I may as well. Like endurance or stamina or maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Well, I don't want to get hurt. So what do we, what do we do? Is there something, is there somewhere where we could put our points so that I don't get hurt anymore? Defense? Defense, yes. Yes, actually, I think, there's, I think there's a light novel in manga that can show us the ropes of putting all our points in defense and what mm -hmm. comes of that. In fact, I think that might be our last announcement at this New York Comic Con Yen Press Manga and Light Novel Party. Last but not least, this is our grand finale announcement. Bofuri. We're doing it, everybody. <laughs> Stop asking for it now. And if you haven't asked for it, and congratulations, you win. But yes, the last announcement for this panel is Bofuri. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. And just because I want to, I'm going to try and say the Japanese title again. It's a bit of a tongue twister, so don't roast me if I trip over it, but there's a pretty good reason I'm reading this one out. So the Japanese title for this series is Itai no wa ya na no de Bogyo roku ni kyokufuri shitai to And the the bogyoruku and kyokufuri are the standout parts that sort of make up the first word of the English title, because um, bogyoruku means defense or defensive power, and kyokufuri is to like min max or max out, and that's ex exactly what our protagonist Maple gets up to in this series. Up oh, green screen, anywho. So bofuri, this series is honestly. Um, one that's probably going to be near and dear to the hearts of a lot of gamers. And so it follows Maple, who got invited to play a new virtual reality MMO by her friend. Um, her real name is Kaede Honjo, so the in-game name she chooses is Maple because, as some of you may know, Kaede is the Japanese word for Maple. Um, and as we've like explained to at this point, she's not a huge fan of getting hurt because she starts the game by herself and her friend isn't really around to play with her to start with. So she pumps all of her points into defense from the very beginning, and she gets this huge shield. She chooses like the Great Shielder class. Um, so as she's going through the world, she's trying to figure out how she's supposed to make her way or progress. And she's just carrying around this massive shield, and 
the first enemy jumps at her and she freaks out because she's afraid she's gonna like you know get wiped out from the start but she realizes that because she has like a hundred points all in defense it doesn't hurt at all and from then on she starts having a whole lot of fun early on in her MMO career, she like gets some pretty rare drops that synergize extremely well with her ludicrous defense. And at that point, her progression can only be described as snowballing. Like she gets so crazy powerful here and there. I'm not gonna give away too much because I want you all to read the book, but I've actually been affectionately calling this series Shield Art Online because it's another one of our MMO not so isekai stories like it's weird i don't know if a character necessarily has to die to for the um genre to count as isekai but she's in another world so i'm just gonna call it like isekai light or isekai soft anywho if i had to give this series a comparison title i would say that maple is sort of like len from ggo if she got possessed by Kum um, kumoko from so i'm a spider and then stole now for me shield from rising of shield hero the series itself has like really strong the heroes overpowered vibes but it also has some pretty funny like so i'm a spider vibes because she herself is like a super chill character even though she goes on to become like a god slayer or something like you didn't hear that from me but i really really like how cute this series is if you're an mmo player you're gonna love it for sure um i know that i on the come up, played tanks in just about any, every MMO I ever touched, like Maple Story, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, you name it. So, seeing more sh um, heroes swinging around giant shields is everything that I could ask for in a book like this. As for the question of whether or not virtual worlds uh, count as Isekai, apparently there's an ongoing debate about that that we probably would not have time for for this panel. You know what? I know where we do have time for that. We are going to have a, a live, a live Q and A, or, or live interaction, or just a live hangout, whatever you want to call it. If you all want to talk to Yen Press live, meet us in the in the, uh, the the Discord channel. So we'll have information on that on our social media. Uh, additionally, I believe New York Comic Con might have that information uh, on their social media or at our virtual booth. But look out for it because we are going to have some time slotted to talk to to you all on on Discord. So if you want to debate, uh, is it an isekai? Is it not an isekai? Questions for any you know any of us? Please please meet us in the Discord channel. But for the time being, that is the end to the Yen Press Manga and Light Novel Party. So thank you very much, panelists, and thank you very much, everybody, for, for watching and listening. See you in the Discord channel, and if not, we'll see you later. Bye. 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 My hand. <laughs>